friction, air resistance, water resistance, and upthrust. Describe the two surfaces that rub together when Marcus rides his bike along the path. The two surfaces are the gravel path and the wheels of his bike. What is the force between these two surfaces called? It's called friction. What effect does it have on how fast Marcus can ride his bike? It slows him down. Talk about when you're swimming. Is there any friction in the water? Yes, there is friction. The friction is between the body surface and water. What is friction? You can understand what friction is by looking at the previous example of Marcus riding his bike. The bike's tires and the gravel path try to slide past each other. The force between these two surfaces that are trying to slide past each other is called friction. Friction only acts on moving objects. Friction always works in the direction opposite to the direction of the moving object. So in this example, the bike tires are the moving objects. The force of friction is acting opposite to the direction of the bike's tires, because of which the bike slows down. Water resistance and air resistance are types of frictions. Water resistance is a force that slows down any moving object that is moving through water. And air resistance is a force that slows down any object moving through air. Both water resistance and air resistance are sometimes called drag because they drag back the object or moving object. Forces in water. Have you tried to push a beach ball down in the sea or a swimming pool? The ball floats on the surface. This is because there is a force in the water that pushes things up. This is called an upthrust force. Any object that moves through body will be slowed down by the drag or water resistance. The shape of an object can help reduce the drag. Objects like fish in the picture have a sleek or streamlined body. This causes disturbance of the water and therefore less drag. Swimmers try to copy the streamlined shape of the fish because of which the effect of drag is reduced. Identify upthrust, gravity, and water resistance. Look at the picture of the boat. Identify the force that is pushing the boat up. It's upthrust. Thrust means to push something, and up means to push upwards. Identify the force pushing the boat down. It's obviously gravity. Identify the force that will happen when the boat moves through water, it's water resistance. Draw the boat. Draw and label three arrows to show the forces you identified in questions 1 to 3. Why do fish move quickly through water? Fish have a streamlined shape. This reduces the drag so the fish can swim faster. How do we use signs to design plastic caps for swimmers? People designed tight-fitting plastic caps for swimmers to reduce water resistance and allow them to swim faster. A parachute uses air resistance to work. The person needs a parachute to help them reach Earth slowly and safely. It's very light in weight and has a very big surface area. It catches lots of air in it as it falls down. This creates lots of pressure resistance. In the diagram given, there are the directions of the forces marked. Air resistance goes upwards and the weight of the person is downwards. And these two forces become equal.
Now here's an activity. You will need to make two parachutes. For that you will need a thin string, a thin plastic sheet, sticky tape to identical weights such as small plastic toys, scissors and a stopwatch. To make the parachutes you will need to cut two squares from the plastic sheet. One square needs to be 10 by 10 centimeter and the other needs to be 20 by 20 centimeter. Trim the edges with the scissors to make an eight sided shape. Make a small hole with a pencil near the edge of each side. Thread a piece of string about 15 to 20 centimeter long through each hole. Tie knots so that the string does not come through the holes. The strings must be the same length. Join the ends of eight strings with a knot. Attach the object you're going to use for a weight to the knot with sticky tape. For testing your parachutes, you will need to stand on a chair and raise your arm to drop the small parachute. Remember that you want to drop it as slowly as possible, so don't throw it. Use a stopwatch to record how many seconds it takes for the parachute to reach the ground. Repeat this three times to check your results. Decide whether you need to repeat more times to get more reliable data. Record your results in a table. Then predict whether the larger parachute will fall faster or the slower than the small parachute. Repeat these steps with the large parachute to test your prediction. Now here are a few questions that you need to answer. Name two forces that are acting on the parachute after you dropped it. It's gravity and air resistance. Draw a force diagram to show the forces acting on your parachute. The gravity moves downwards and air resistance goes upwards. Calculate the average time it took for the small parachute to fall and then calculate the average time it took for the large parachute to fall. Which parachute took longer to fall and was this what you predicted? Explain why the parachute fell faster than the other. The bigger parachute took longer to fall. The larger surface area of plastic caused more air resistance. Suggest a way to change a parachute to make it fall more slowly. You can just make a bigger parachute. Write a conclusion about the speed the parachute falls compared to the size of the parachute and the forces acting on it. The larger the parachute, more air resistance and slower it falls.